This is Ben Gillespie interviewing Ruben Ortiz Torres at his home in Los Angeles, California on August 17th, 2020 for the Smithsonian Institution Archives of American Art Pandemic Project. Ruben, could you tell me a little bit about what 2020 has been like for you and your life and your work? Oh, wow. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess, uh, I guess like for everyone else, it's been a disaster, right? There is a disaster. Um, I don't complain, though, because I'm very lucky in a way. I mean, I'm, I'm healthy and, and I have a, a steady job, which most people do not have. I'm a professor uh, of the University of California. So, so in certain ways, uh, I probably have it better than most people. Um, but it's been, it's been very difficult. I mean, it's been, uh, I mean, as you can imagine, uh, everything is, it's, it's closed. Uh, the university is closed. The, the, my studios in San Diego where I produce are closed. Uh, my assistant uh, had to go back home. Uh, and, and the most worrisome part is that uh, I was having very important exhibitions uh, this year, right? I was having very important exhibitions. Um, I had a retrospective exhibition that opened at the end of last year in Mexico City. And this exhibition was supposed to come to the San Diego Museum of Contemporary. It was supposed to travel, right? To go to Monterrey, Mexico, and later on to the, to the San Diego Museum of Contemporary. I also have another exhibition that opened um, at the beginning of the year here in Los Angeles at the gallery called Royal Projects. So as we speak, both exhibitions are up in limbo. <laughs> I mean, they are, they are hanging in walls uh, that nobody can see. And, uh, and it's, uh, and we're trying to refigure everything, right? Because, you know, like, I don't know, I don't know where the, the art world is going to go from here, where the market is going to be, if there's going to be a market, uh, what's going to happen, right? And this is going to have, I mean, already there were certain problems with uh, the way the, the, the art world was sort of operating and working. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, it, this is going to have consequences uh, that we don't, we can't foresee right now. But I, it seems to me that you know, in, do international exhibitions that travel, all that is going to become more expensive and most more difficult. And we'll see how that goes. But I would like to think that every crisis is an opportunity, and and that these uh, problems would also make us think about the purpose and the uh, and what we do, right? The purpose of what we do, yes. <laughs> so as an artist who's so interested in cross-cultural exchange and the ways in which different cultures adapt ideas and images, um, could you tell me a little bit about how this, this rootedness, like you can't travel, the shows can't travel, um, how is that influencing your work with, without access to your studio and with your assistant being at home? Yeah, well, um, I mean, again, uh, I mean, I guess I would like to think that uh, um, the way we work or the way I work, uh, it's also dependent obviously on the context, right? And, and where do we show, how do we show, how do we think about things? And, and as it stands right now, uh, we cannot uh, see things, uh, we cannot travel, we cannot uh, uh, be in places where there's lots of people and it's difficult to look at objects. Um, but that doesn't mean that we cannot communicate. I mean, we're communicating, right? I mean, this, this interview might be, might be actually somehow, I mean, I, I would think it's related to the, the work of making art. So, so we're doing other things. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm writing, I'm, I'm designing, I'm drawing, uh, I'm working with computers, I'm doing digital stuff and, uh, and, and rethinking, right, about all these things. So we are, I think, again, these, these are uh, opportunities to rethink about um, uh, how do we uh, uh, access, you know, an audience, and how do we produce art and the things that that, that we produce? The, for, for me, it's it's interesting because the work the work that I I mean the work as you mentioned the work that I do obviously has to do a lot with uh, with 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 culture and cultural production and cultural exchange and and misrepresentation and communication and miscommunication and you know so on and so forth. Um, so, at the, like, you know, I'm surprised that, for my surprise, actually, some of the work, I think, in a certain way, has become more relevant, because some of the issues, uh, like, for example, the, the show that I have in, uh, at Royal Projects, which I guess, like, a couple of the pieces that I have on the background uh, sort of uh, come from there, 
it's a show that I started working. Uh, I started working with, uh, you know, it, it's a it, using parts of, of of patrols that I found in Tijuana, right? Uh, of cars that somehow were burned, um, and and then I also worked with a lot of customized customizing materials that car customizers use, like such as as um, you know, uh, candy paints and metallic flakes and all these things. And, and it turns out that in some, there were these protests uh, originally in Mexico where women were protesting uh, uh, about police brutality and they were protesting using actually glitter, right? Um, right now, uh, here we're protesting, I mean, here in the United States, we're, we're also seeing protests that have to do with police brutality. Uh, and uh, so the work for me, it, it's interesting because it becomes relevant and, and the causes of, the, of these problems, whether, I mean, in the case of Mexico and Latin America, this police brutality has to do with, uh, with gender, um, with, with uh, power abuse in relation to gender. Here, it has to do with race, but I think that at the end, they, they both have the same roots and they are similar. And, and so the work for me is interesting because it, it's a still, um, the, the retrospect. I mean, the work that I've been, that I have in this other show, in the retrospective, is obviously work that I've been producing for the last thirty years. And yet, you know, when I came to the United States in, in California in the nineties, uh, you know, there, there there was this like you know I saw the LA riots and uh, and there were all these incidents and um, and also all these problems like you know at the time there was a the proposition one eighty seven and all these. Uh, how the, the the landscape changed politically uh, here in California because of the of the pol politics that had to do with uh, with xenophobia and the fear of uh, and, and you know, generating this fear and you know we're like whatever thirty years afterwards and we're still debating those things right so the work it seems to me that it's still I mean even is is still relevant and these issues are still haven't been solved and anyway so so there's a uh, yeah, we're still dealing with these things. So I think the work is still somehow the other. Maybe right now we'll work on, on different platforms, but it's it, it, it's continuing. Yes. <laughs> and have there been any subjects that have been particularly relevant to you working these past few months? What's drawing your attention and keeping your focus? Of course they are. I mean, I, I'm actually quite amazed that, um, I mean, the his, for example, I don't know, for me it's really interesting how do, how do we value things? I mean, what, what, what thing, I mean, for example, you guys in the Smithsonian, I mean, for you guys, how do you guys, buy, what is, what represents America, right? I mean, it's a, this is a question that I, you know, is, you know we, it's, it, we think a lot, right? And, and for example, I've been, th since I came here, you know, I remember that uh, there's this uh, very important piece that, that, that uh, there's, there's a story, this situation that happened in Los Angeles in the 30s, right? Uh, you have a Mexican artist that comes here, you know, David Alfaro Siqueiros, and creates this mural that is his version of America. He calls it Tropical America. In this mural, he portrays this, um, this Native American that is being crucified, right? And the, and the mural gets censored. You know, the, the woman that commissioned the, 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 the mural who used to work, like, you know, they were developing Olvera Street. She censors the mural and, paint, and covers it, paints it white. So uh, now, uh, years afterwards, now the Getty Center, I mean, we're spending a lot of money trying to recover that, that mural. But at the same time, we're destroying other monuments, right? It's like the, the all of a sudden, and, and here in the case of California, I mean, the the monuments to Junipero Serra, Fray Junipero Serra, for example, of, uh, um, you know, uh, have been considered problematic and they've been removed, right? Um, in other parts of the country, those monuments have to do with, uh, with the Confederacy, right? And, and they bring back a legacy that, and a series of problems that, that are affecting people directly, right? I mean, people have, I mean, you know, the, there's issues of police brutality, uh, racism, uh, violence, and, and so on and so forth. So, so we have to reconsider what, what what kind of um, I mean what monuments do we want to have? Do we want to have monuments at all or not? I mean, uh, and then we, there's this kind of iconoclasm, right? Like certain things go up, we destroy certain things, and then we we construct some other ones, right? And um, and 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 that's something that uh, I mean I've always been I've been sort of interested, right? It's like you know what um, I mean the relationship between abstraction and figuration. The, the politics of abstraction, the politics of, uh, 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 the, of the, the destruction of art or, or, or creation. I mean, these are 
these are issues that are contested, are relevant, and, I, and we're trying to redefine them, right? And, and, uh, and right now, you know, obviously, that's, that has become, it's something that has become very, very important, and it's been debated a lot right now. Mm -hmm. So do you find, well, I mean, what are some strategies that you have been deploying? So talking about iconoclasm, um, how, do we, how do we deal with history if it's not just destroying the records that we have and getting rid of the monuments? Is it, is it the determinant, like defacing and adapting the history? How do we grapple with it? And um, how are you feeling those effects and consequences in your art, in your teaching? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, uh, because obviously it's a complicated question, right? I mean, is, is it about just substituting certain kind of icons by others and, and just be constantly playing with these substitutions and having this rotation of, of iconographies? Um, I, I would like to think that the problem is not, it shouldn't be, uh, the problem I don't think it should be uh, trying to define uh, you know, trying to select certain iconography, like, you know, to define a, fi a final iconography, because it's, again, um, what defines, right? I mean, what, what's going to be this iconography that defines America? And I, I personally don't think that it, it has to do with that. I would like to think that, if anything, um, it should be to find mechanisms of negotiation and reconciliation uh, that, that, would, that should allow uh, the freedom of the people that participate, uh, to, of, of all of us, right? So that we all of us can participate into the into the into the into these, these discussions and these mechanisms. It's not about substituting ones for others. I mean, I don't think it's 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 about substituting one kind of intolerance for another one, but in fact, to create certain mechanisms that allow for for these. Uh, uh, process of negotiations and, and, and reconciliation. I don't think for me the problem, I mean, we're, it, we're in a very interesting moment because, you know, for the, for the longest time we have, we have had this, uh, this idea of art and history as this sequence of events where one thing substitutes the other and, substitute, and then there's this kind of parasite, right? Like, you know, we killed whatever it was before us and, and come with something else and, and then that eventually will be killed. And I think at this point, we're getting to this moment where we have tried everything and none of it <laughs> worked perfectly, right? Everything. Uh, and, and, uh, and so, you know, we talk about the end of art or the end of history. I mean, it's not that there's the end of art or the end of history, but I think there's a, there's a moment to figure out that it's not, it's, it's not necessarily about abstraction or figuration, um, that both, you know, if, if there's politics involved in both uh, languages or in any language that we use. Um, but it's more about hopefully creating these uh, sort of kind of mechanisms that, that, that can allow for this process to be negotiated peacefully. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, in a, in a way, I'm still probably wrong. I mean, I, uh, it's interesting to me because it seems to me that we have two contested versions of what America is, right? On one hand, on one hand we have this model, um, you're this abstract model. America is this set of ideas, right? You know, democracy, freedom. And, and then we have this other, but of course that, that model is always being a paradox because at the end the freedom was never, there was never freedom for everyone. Uh, it was supposed to be this, uh, you know, freedom of religion, freedom of this, freedom of that, but at the end it was, a, okay, everybody would have to assimilate to this, you know, Anglo-Protestant model. <laughs> so it, that, that was a contradiction in itself, right? Well, do we really have freedom or we have to assimilate to it? On another hand, we have this, it seems to me that there's this other notion of, of, of America that exists sort of in opposition to Europe or Asia or Africa, right? And it's this, this idea of this new world where things collide and combine and mix, and, you know, the nation of immigrants. And, and in this notion of America, I'm, I'm, I'm using America now in a broad sense, right? In a Pan-American sense, actually. Uh, and both are interesting ideas to me, actually. If we if we consider the first one as an abstraction, as this ideal where there's this place where we have these these models of uh, of freedom and democracy and negotiation, it's it could be actually quite universal and appealing for everyone if we apply it as it's as as it says it's supposed to be without these other ideas of of having to assimilate to a particular religion or ethnicity or whatever. Um, in, and in the other model, I think there's also a lesson because it's also it's also this idea of, of, of miscegenation or mestizaje, right? That involves uh, the possibilities that, that, you know, to incorporate that to, to really be America is this other project that is actually not Europe, 
uh, that that uh, that 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 involves say, like you know an African presence or an uh, an Asian presence, and I would say an Asian presence through Native American presence. Um, I think both. I don't see both in opposition. Actually, I think both models actually perhaps could be complementary, and cultural different is interesting. You know? uh, so hopefully, I, I don't know. I mean. I, it's hard to say right now because we have all of this is being contested. But I would like to be optimistic and think that that hopefully out of this mess uh, uh, we would advance towards this <laughs> better situation. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, I, guess, um, I realize now, belatedly, I should have asked you to tell me a little bit about the art that is forming your background right now. Uh huh. Well, here, yeah, it's a, it's a, as I said, you know. The, the, the show, the, the, the exhibition, it was called uh, uh, Plomo, Plata, or Glitter, right? It's like lead, silver, or glitter, right? And, and this, you know, we have the hood of a, of a patrol, and it's painted with, with silver and uh, glitter and lead, right? <laughs> Isn't it lead, and, lead and, and silver, you know, become these sort of uh, signifiers of power, right? Lead as in bullets and silver. One. But I like them as materials. I like them as uh, the physicality of silver and the physicality of lead, like, you know, these metals that are very malleable and you can use them. You know, there's silver leaf and there's mold, uh, I mean, uh, uh, melted uh, lead and, and also glitter, which is, again, I think glitter for me is like a different kind of power. It doesn't give you the power, like, you know, it's, it's the power of aesthetics because it's, it's appealing, it's pretty, it's like a Again, customized cars, like, you know, use glitter. My daughters love glitter. So anyway, I use these materials and I, I, create, I create this, this playful. Um, the panel on the, there's a panel, the monochrome pink panel, uh, that's a little bit like, a, it's supposed to be the pinkest pink. You know, it's, this, it's painted with this pigment that claims to be the pinkest pink of all of them. And, uh, and, and it also has a little bit of glitter. Hard to see, but if you look at it, like, you know, it has this sparkle that, you know. So, so again, these are like, uh, they're abstract, but they also relate to the, they have particular histories because that, uh, that hood actually, it belonged to, to a patrol and it was shot. Uh, so it actually could be, I assume there's some forensic evidence there. Of, uh, supposedly it, these were shot in around the border, like, you know, the, uh, some years ago, uh, presumably by the cartels. Some of them were burned too. I had, so I, found, I collected all these objects and I created this. Uh, art pieces with them, and uh, so so they uh, again they they're kind of they're, they're kind of abstract and seductive, but they also have these other histories and and and, uh, and symbolisms, and we want to read them. Uh, if not, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I still tell you, you guys should uh, see the show. Uh, there's there's more art pieces, yeah. Yeah, well, as you were talking about the the narratives of America, of America and how we think about the formation of identity, I was very much struck by the the pink monochrome and the conceptual sense of identity, and then the sort of collision of materiality um, over your other kind of that sort of like materialist realist approach to identity formation. Um, and so we're getting close to the end of time here, and um, I guess I'm wondering when. What are you looking forward to as things change? I mean, there's sort of, there's no horizon at the moment, but what sorts of lessons or memories feel the most urgent for you moving forward out of 2020? Well, I think there's several ones. Uh, one of them is that, uh, you know, the role of, uh, because the role, the role of institutions, right? And culture and audience. Uh, we are getting to a moment where where you know there was a lot of there was a lot of money being moving you know in relation to art and then you have these international art fairs and a few galleries that had a lot a very like you know that were consolidating a very big market and then a lot of other galleries that were struggling actually um, and 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 then uh, these first um, again you know like these small galleries would go to all these go around the world and there was a lot of money. This model, I think, it wasn't it wasn't functional. It was too it was expensive. It was complicated. It was centralized. There was not a space for a lot of stuff. So I would like to think that uh, it, it, again the, the, the institutions, right? I mean, what's the audience of these institutions? 
Um, right now, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, reaching, you know, having having a, a different kind of base, like you know, reaching talking about the community, you know, the museum in relation to a community. What's the role of the museum? And I'm just thinking that this, uh, uh, like, if, because a lot of this, I mean, it's, it's obviously this is very difficult, but but it seems to me that that we really need to uh, to think about the, you know, the. As, as, as the galleries, the artists, the, the cultural institutions, the museums, and the schools, that the, fu the function that we have is actually, we have to be more pragmatic and more immediate, right? It's like the people that we got close to us, that the museums have to pay attention to their neighborhoods and their local audiences, uh, the schools, the universities, we have to pay attention again to the places where we are and, and uh, serve the student, uh, our students uh, that are close to, uh, uh, that's how, you know, as artists too, I mean, where, where are other audience, our audiences, are our audiences like, you know, in the biennial, who knows where, and the fair, who knows where, or, or, or on the people that we leave, that we serve that. So I think all of this needs to be rethought, right? Like, you know, we, we have to, uh, we have to rethink about who do we serve and how do we get, get access to it. And, the, and, and every, I mean, we, everybody, the whole society has to rethink. I mean, not, not just the cultural institutions. I mean, if the police has to rethink that, imagine, I mean, us as teachers, us as doctors, us as artists, we have to rethink who, who, how, what's our role and how, do we, how can we serve better? How can we do this better and more immediate to the people that we have to help with? It seems to me, you know, uh, I, I just think that, uh, my role as a teacher, I have to take it seriously, right? You know, it's like who, um, where we stand uh, as an artist and as a teacher. And, and uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, yes. I, think, I think that's a wonderful place to, to leave it with looking for the future of the, the ways in which we can all just sort of, yeah, learn to look around a little bit and, and commit ourselves to a better future. So thank you very much for speaking with me today. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs>